The safe and efficient management of its free and abundant fuel source, water, is central to the operation of our hydro business. Our hydro schemes are all about how we can maximise the generation of green electricity while safely managing this fuel source. How we continue to strike that balance will be key to providing the flexibility that makes SSE renewable hydropower assets so important to our future energy mix in Scotland. In this episode, we'll look again at how we manage the storage of water throughout our hydro schemes to ensure maximum flexibility to be able to generate when needed. We'll also look at how we balance this with the need to help manage the threat of both flood and drought, protecting wildlife both in and out of the water. First of all, we'll start with a reminder of how our hydro schemes work to maximise the collection of water and ensure it is available to generate green electricity when it's needed. Regardless of the type of hydropower in question, very few of SSE's hydropower stations operate in isolation. They are part of a series of water described as cascades. Within each cascade, a high storage reservoir provides the storage, and then the water is managed down the cascade system through a series of power stations, lochs and reservoirs. This allows us to maximise generation and control when that generation capacity is needed. For example, in our tunnel scheme, we have a cascade which includes nine power stations, four major dams, 10 locks and reservoirs. This ability to manage the storage of water and control its availability is increasingly central to hydropower's importance in our electricity system. In effect, our hydro assets act like a battery storing energy for when it's needed. Throughout all our catchments, there's a, a network of um, ditches and intakes. Um, intakes essentially being small, small dams. And when the engineers designed the original schemes, they, they looked at where the rain falls and installed these, this network of ditches and intakes to collect all the water that falls within the catchment. The water is then piped, usually by a, a tunnel or an aqueduct, back to our, our main storage reservoirs. So essentially we fill our main storage reservoirs using a much wider catchment area. These ditches and intakes have to be maintained throughout the year because obviously they can become quite full of sediment and gravel just through the natural movement. So we've got teams out maintaining them and ensuring that we're getting maximum efficiency of water collection and generation. How we maximise flexibility and storage while also fulfilling our obligations to help with the management of both flood and drought conditions in Scotland is a key challenge for the hydro business. Having too much water rather than too little is, not surprisingly, a more common problem for our hydro teams. Obviously we're dealing with large volumes of water, be that through rainfall or, or snow melt, depending on the time of year. Our storage reservoirs have the capacity to, to hold a lot of that water at certain times when in natural conditions the water would just be making its way downstream. So that storage capacity allows us flexibility to keep the water where we need it and, and take the peak times off the floods. So you don't have all the water progressing downstream at the same time, which can reduce flood risk. We also have a duty of care to minimise the impact of our operations on the environment and to help protect and promote Scotland's stunning natural habitat. For example, when they were built, our hydro schemes were designed to help important migratory fish species, such as salmon, move up and down in our hydro schemes. During the development of these schemes, there was lots of liaison with the, the fishery boards and the fishery trusts to mitigate for the impact of the dam. The fish ladder at Pilocchi was the first of its kind in Scotland. It's essentially a ladder which they climb to, to get past the dam. It's 310 metres long and there's 34 pools. So the fish swim into the pools and through a flume in each pool to get to the next one and they step their way up until they get to the top and then they swim out into Loch Fascally. We also work with other organisations such as RSPB and Nature Scott to help other species, particularly bird life. In the Tumble Cascade we have the Dunalisa Reservoir SSSI, which is a special site of scientific interest and during the bird breeding season, which is roughly around April till um, August, we maintain that reservoir level in a certain position so it does not have any negative impacts on the, the breeding birds that breed around the fringes of the reservoir. 
up at Loch Loyne, up in the north near, near Loch Ness. We manage water levels there to try and provide the best conditions for common scoter, which are a, a not very common species of duck. They breed on some of the islands on, on Loch Loyne and we manage the water to the best of our ability to try and provide the best conditions to allow them to breed successfully. Obviously we're at the mercy of mother nature with it and climate change means the weather patterns are changing and we're getting different weather at different times to, to what we might have historically, but we can certainly to the best of our ability manage these water levels to provide conditions which are um, suitable for breeding. In the final episode of our tour, we will look at how we are using digital technology to bring hydro into the 21st century and ensure that it can maximise its role in combating climate change. <laughs>